welcome back to another episode. Uh, if you are enjoying these shows, then feel free to follow us and give us a like and maybe rate us out of five. And if you are new to the show, then listen to the previous ones. You'll, you'll see that we've come a long way. Uh, not so much. <laughs> uh, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Slow is, that, is, is that travelling purposes? Tra- we've come a long way for this. Uh, all in South Yorkshire. So, in the Grumps Bar this evening... It's the same people. It's the same people. We'll, we'll, we'll introduce them because it every, is worth mentioning. Every them. night. Ed of Twiddly Knobs is the the wonderful Louis. Ed of Knob Twiddling is a not so wonderful <laughs> way. <laughs> and uh, Ed of Drinking is my good self. Tonight's topic, we, we thought we'd start with uh, a, a, a bit of a, a new thing what we haven't done so far. We, we, we're going to... We've all brought with us... A uh, magic trick. A magic trick. Then. Magic on the radio. It's a big thing. Yeah. Yes, it is. I'll show you I, I brought first. a card trick. <laughs> this, 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 there we go. Put the card down. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, we thought we'd review... We, we'd each present a piece of music by an artist that we wanted to introduce the other members of the panel to. Not necessarily a favourite band or whatever, just to introduce them to a, probably something they're not that all that familiar with or what they are familiar with. So we, we we thought we'd go with that one tonight. And uh, Wayne, what was your offering this evening? Oh, I'm first. Right. Yeah. Well, well, my offering was a track by Joe Bonamassa, and it's the Matador of Bayon. The last, the last Matador, Matador of Bayon. Bayon. Would you like to give your your review on it? Please? Well, no, I'd rather you guys give me a review on it. Yeah. Go on then. The last Matador of Bayon by Joe Bonamassa is track seven of his ninth, his 2011 album Dust Bowl. See, I've done research. You have. <laughs> now I've, I'm familiar with this track because although I've been off him of late, I'm I'm, I'm a particular fan. I've seen him. I've seen Joe Bonamassa. We've both seen him together, and uh, we saw him when he wasn't doing big arenas or big theatres. He was doing a four or five hundred club. I don't. How many does the plug hold? And I don't think it was full that night. No, I it, wouldn't have said there were many more than three hundred people in the plug when we. Yeah, saw we him. were seeing him in little clubs when he was doing three hundred people, and it, it were. It was brilliant, and I we I thought him at that stage that I really liked him. Then, but I fell out with him slightly later. I think it was probably around time of Dust Bowl. I think that was the probably it, it got a bit awkward for me after that. In a, I went I went gelling with him as much. I went enjoying, but this particular track that Wayne's picked, uh, the last Matador Beyond, it is a good track. It's well constructed. It's uh, Kevin Shirley again. He's his all time or the caveman, and he's like to be known producer. It starts off very slowly. Very melodic, gently meandering. Then all of a sudden you can physically hear him pressing all the buttons and turning all the knobs up to 11. And he gives you this wonderful solo, which peaks and drops and builds and builds and builds. And then all of a sudden it just dies away and it gently resolves itself. It's a great track. It's a great track. I like it. I'm going to give it I'm going to give it a 7.5. 7.5. Okay. 7.5. Bearing in mind, nobody gets 10. Well, no. Because no. nothing's perfect. Uh, no, it isn't. No. No. So I think 7.5 is a very respectable score. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. It's a very atmospheric song. So there's obvious, I mean, there's a Mexican vibe, clearly, even though obviously it's a, a region, France, but all about Bain. Anyway, I feel like I know where the song's going and it's a wonderful solo, but it's not like, it's not, it's not doing like crazy show of stuff. It's very atmospheric from beginning to end. It's like, it's like a storm brewing in and out. It's nice. Ooh. Yeah. It's, it's got a lot of vibe. I had to have a look at lyrics because... You couldn't hear them. <clears throat> no, it wasn't so much that. It was the fact that The Last Matador of Bayon, it seemed, it seemed like a strange topic for him. The Last Matador of Bayon. And, and it's thought, not a cover at all, and I thought, is no, this, no, 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 it's not. Oh, right. I thought, is there some metaphor that I'm missing here? So I had a look at lyrics, and it's all about the bringing to an end of the matadors. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the way they did finish, and so I thought, oh, and that, which intrigued the me. Last it, curtain call, the, the last curtain closes. Yeah, and it, it, it intrigued me even more. So I went on online and had a look, and I, I read his explanation of it. Apparently, he was touring Europe, and he was doing all these amphitheatres, and he had to be just mooching about around these amphitheatres. And he found this little door, and it's where they used to have boat fights and, and one thing or another. And, and he just opened this little door, and it was a little prayer room that matadors used to use. And he just got to thinking, oh, who was the owner of the last person to use this? Because by this stage, they stopped. Killing the bulls. Mm. They just used to torment hell out them. And he, and he just got to thinking, I wonder who were the last matador who used this room. And then he got to thinking about the history of it and consequently the song evolved from that. 
there's no hidden metaphor, there's no hidden meaning behind it. It's just a basic story about the last matador and beyond. No particular person, just the yeah. old, the end yeah. of an era. Yeah. So yeah. is the solo a bullfight? Well, it could be. There's no bulls involved. No yeah. bulls were injured during the making of the solo, I don't think. Wow. We hope not, anyway. We hope. Boom. That's a nice try. <coughs> as soon as it was yours, would you like to tell us about it? Yeah, well, the reason why I went for that is because I feel that it's got feel of plenty. Ooh. It starts off with a great intro. It's very subtle. This, it's like we said. It's not hundred mile an hour. It's not fast playing, but it's just. It's just. I think it's probably his best solo that he's written that he's done. Just because he's he's got feel there. He's not showing off of what he can do. Look at me. I can do this. I can do that. Yeah, it, it has. It is riddled it's, with feel. Yeah, it's just got so much feel to it, and it's just nice, steady pace playing. Every note is. Perfect. It's just going places. We do know I'm going to argue with that, don't you? In a, yeah, and in, in in a nice way. And I don't think he's done a better solo. You know I'm going to argue with that. Don't you? Commencing if, bullfight. Yeah, <laughs> if he has done a better solo, then it would probably be something like the Great Flood. But I think I the, ma- argue with that as well. the Matador one is a is a, is a, is, a, is a probably for me. Up there in my top three solos of all time. Well, you know, I, mine. I, I would have thought you were going to go with Blues Deluxe. Correct. The opening bit of Blues Deluxe, which is the a whole great song. Track. The whole song for me. But I just thought I, I I don't know. I just love the track. I just yeah. when I listen to it, I hang I hang on to every note. I I really listen to what he's doing, and, I, and it really captures me. And I just right to very last note when it just fades away. I just think every time I hear it, I've listened to it thousands of times and, and every time it's just that's brilliant it's just brilliant it's absolute and brilliant and it, and it was as i alluded to earlier it's, it's after that stage after dust bowl when it started to make his solos meander a little bit yeah and they did tend to go off a little bit yeah look in at a, what i can do type of thing yeah well yeah, well, yeah and it, it does yeah. it didn't they didn't flow as well as the solo in that one does it it, it does he does do some fast work in certain sections, but he brings it back round and resolves it. But it's never it never loses the melody. It never loses. It's not an aimless number of notes. No. It's just it's just feel. Yeah, and, and it's constructed it just very plays well. With, yeah, it plays with conviction. Yeah, yeah, and it's just it's just lovely. It plays it in uh, it's F major solos in D minor. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, yeah, it's in right. F major because the, the relative minor, minor yeah, right, yeah. Well, so the relative minor to F yeah, is yeah. D minor. So that's so where that blues is welcome from. Yeah, so yeah. the solo is in D minor, nice. but it's the construction is F major. Nice little details there, I like that. Yeah, so yeah. It's, and yeah. it's 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 just brilliant. I I think honestly, I do think that is his best solo. And uh, I've listened. Did, did you know that because you've uh, got the tab for it? I have got the top of it. Yeah. Have you tried it? Yeah. Can I do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it as slow as him, can you? Not as yeah, slow. It's too as quick him. and more, too much feel. I only I'm did w- it faster. I'm way too fast for Joe. Oh. <laughs> Not well, that. This phone's pinged. It's my watch. Oh. It's probably Joe thanking me for the uh, for for the review. He's probably telling <laughs> it's in D. He's probably telling it's in D. <laughs> <laughs> he knows better than to work it. Undermine me. Do it better than to interrupt. Yeah. <laughs> that's why he messages me and don't ring. And that's why he's falling out of favour with him because he no longer texts him. <laughs> well, no, he stopped texting me ages ago. So yeah, so I went for that just because of the uh, the feel of that. I, 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 it's a very feely song to me. I just think yeah. it's um, it's up It here. is one of his better ones. But it, yeah, but I think it, it's not one of his popular ones for some reason. Oh, yeah. Did you do you do you feel that it did change after that period? Yeah, he did. Two thousand eleven. <laughs> he went a bit odd. Not not odd, but he went a bit. I think he. I think you've he got stopped. to bear in mind, listeners, all, all those thousands of, of listeners that's out there that Wayne has seen Joe Bonamassa more than Joe Bonamassa's mother's seen him. Yeah, yeah. I've followed him every year <laughs> since the since the plug one. What we did, which was Blue Deluxe, was it? Yeah, Blue Deluxe. Yeah, which is going back some years. I've followed him every year. I've pay, I've gone from paying five pound in plug. 125 quid in Sheffield Arena. <laughs> that's that's com- devotion or, or insanity, whichever you yeah. choose. It's the, the both, Probably a bit the, of both. both impressive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, I just went. I, I went for that one. Good, uh, uh, great. I, I like it. I like the. I like the track. Shall Shall I go, or yeah, do you want you, to go? You, next? Go, you go for it. Okay. 
Well, as soon as it were mine, you can give me your review about mine. Oh, what is it? John Lewis. Do you want to? Do you want to tell us? What well, it oh, sorry. <laughs> I just listen. Thought, listen I, you have to guess what I, we're I'd talking like, about. I'd like you all to guess what I've picked. Well, I've gone on, f- on my description. Guess what it is. I've I've gone for a a track called "Invitation to the Blues" by Tom Waits. Yes, strange character, strange for me. And I, when you sent this through an invitation, and I thought he's purposely done this for me. <laughs> no, no, because he wants to get he wants to get my views he wants on this. Poke the bear. Yes, he wants to poke the bear. <laughs> Let's see how much he squeals. <laughs> so first of all, it starts off. And I've brought down here a fucking piano. Well, it, yeah. Well, you've got to explain to the listeners that Wayne doesn't like piano no, music. I, I, no. You don't like piano music. No. No. So you don't you like don't live need... music. You don't like piano no, music. You're cutting out a lot of music there, Wayne. I don't do piano stuff. So no. hold on a minute. So no. you don't like Coldplay clocks, then? Let's say. <sighs> mm, nice. Anything with a piano. Is. Favorite. So you don't like favorite. Bohemian Rhapsody. Ah, look at him. Fraud. Yes. But it's just, yeah, fraud. We've got him. Get him, boys. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a I'm I'm not a big piano type of. So you won't say that you're person. the piano man. No, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, the piano man. So you don't like know. Billy Joel then? Well, some of his stuff's all right, but I just I'm just not a piano person. Okay. So it starts off with piano, and um, it's it, and then he starts to sing it, and it made me laugh because the first thing that sprung to mind is this could be a clip it from one of Billy Connolly's stories and it's Billy Connolly doing a, a, a drunken person at one of these parties where he finds upside down behind telly and and, and and stuff like that and then it's a little bit too jazzy for me jazzy yeah I find okay. it, it okay. On, teetering on the j- I mean I've told you this a million times before anyway so you know what I'm gonna go for anyway well, yeah well I know and and the and, viewers don't no and I, I'm not a big and they're not viewers the listeners <laughs> yeah <laughs> But, you know, when you listen to it, when, when I stop pulling it apart and I get past the part of he talks and sounds like a drunken Bowie. <laughs> a drunken Bowie? <laughs> it's, wow. well, it's scathing with his comments on this and one. You, he paints a picture to me of one of these sleaze clubs in New Jersey, something like that, mafia era, around 50s. And wow. and when you listen to words, it, it it could be on them lines of a, you, you know, it, you you could get it on so I could. What did you make of the of the on, words on the on a, well? It, it reminded me of a of a, of a mafia film. So something that's, so that's something like a James Cagney. That's interesting then. So it does paint a picture for you. So yeah, it does. As, yeah, as yeah. an art form. Yeah, well, once it's, I it's very visual, isn't it? Yeah, once I stopped. Um, once I got over the piano bit and the the drunken. Do you think? Bowie. Do you think if you listen to it some more, you'd be able to connect with it better? I think he's got one of them Marmite voices. Mm-hmm. So well, I don't know yeah. if he. I'm not familiar with the guy. I am, but I'm not. I don't. Mind I, I don't listen to him. It's not your I know natural go to type of music. Yeah, I, know. I know of him. Yeah, but I don't know. In I only know this track because of you. You've played it on many occasions, and I can only ever remember this track. Right. So I, do, I, I wouldn't know another track by him. No. So I don't know if all these tracks are sung like this or if this is sung specifically no. for this track. But once you get past him and you get into it and I stopped pulling it apart and I listened to it, which is not like me because I like to pull things apart. Um, I thought, yeah, it's, it's a bit mafia in New Jersey, sleaze, well, you know, one of these sleaze bars where you go downstairs three knocks, show your nipple, and in you can come. Them well, I'm liking places. that you, you actually got past the, the critique side and you actually yeah. started going along with it and you were, you were forming your own picture about what it was about mm. and, and you, you, were, you were putting well, I'm very your own scenario I'm very open-minded words. when I get past the critical Good. I'm parts, glad, because you need to push these boundaries a little bit. We don't need you to do what you want to do, but I'm glad you did that. But, I'm glad yeah. you did that. But, yeah. Yeah. but as I say... I don't know enough about him to know if it's that's his natural way or it's... no. Well, you don't need to. That was a. No. It wasn't the point of why I put it on. I put it on because I like the song, and I just thought I'd introduce you to you both of you to it, and and just to see what you think. Ooh. See what you think. I mean, I mean, there's a funny line in the song, is it? Down to the conk down to your toes, is it? Oh, it's great. I yeah. mean, tell me another another song where there's that. There's, she's a walking violation from her conk down to her shoes. She's an open invitation to the blues. 
It's brilliant. It's a very good line. Yeah. It is it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I say you, you don't find song. Conk in another song. He's a very no. interesting. He's a very interesting artist. But a little fact for you about Tom Waits is that the Dark Knight with what do you call the guy who played the Joker, Heath Ledger, based his voice around Tom Waits. Really? So Tom Waits yeah. speaks like Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. Yeah. Right. Okay. There we go. Oh, I didn't know that. No. Yeah. There you go. And so Heath Ledger was a Tom Waits fan. Yes. Obviously. Uh, yeah. And that presentation that he does, his, his vocals, are sometimes exaggerated and they're sometimes a little less exaggerated than, than he is in that song. But basically, that's how he presents his stuff. So all of his stuff is on yeah. those lines of. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's sort okay. of. It, 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 I think he's got. I think he's got a unique type of singing, hasn't he? I think he's a bit either like him or you don't like him. Either yeah. going to get on with him or yeah. you're not. It's like get everybody else, though, isn't it? It's a, well, different, yeah. it's a different strain of presentation. Yeah, I'll grant you that. Yeah, and it's not everybody's cup of tea. But you know, what were your thinking behind it? <clears throat> well, I I like Tom Waits. So Tom Waits, I believe, plays a. Uh, I believe he plays a character, and that character is what Tom Waits is. But so. As you get Dave Byer playing Ziggy Stardust, Tom Waits plays this drunk at a rundown roadside bar. He's mm. a drunk performer, and I mean, it essentially, as a poet that plays a bit of bit of piano. Called Eve Ledger dressed up as uh, yeah. <laughs> But what he does, what his songs seem to reflect, is sort of a narrative to the the drip tray society of America. This drunk, washed out, like down and out culture in america which is fine because there's a lot of it there's a lot of it everywhere Absolutely. and they've got more quirks than anything else so there's a lot of material to go at i mean if you if you were to strip back if you were to strip back some of the things that it's saying and take away his accent you could potentially quite easily compare it to oscar wilde's sort of poetry and speeches you know is is talking about the down and outs and the uh, cultural struggles and, and whatnot but the thing is as well, what helps is is that Tom Waits has got a great sense of humour. So like these little lines, these like very basic ways of saying things like conk. Yeah. Conk's a funny word. Yeah. But it's such a basic yeah. way. It's like as soon as you say conk. But we all like, understand you can, it. Yeah, you, you can yeah. you can visualise yeah. this this yeah. like this big nose. Well, no, it's not that. You can understand it's what he's saying that big, though. this woman from a nose which he describes as a conk. Yeah, but from a conk a nose down to his shoes. It? She's a walking violation to the blues. Yeah, but but is he going to fall into this trap or is he going to go back to the life he knew before? Is it worth risking everything on this gamble? And he's sat there. Well, I get him really in a little uh, roadside. It sounds like she's ugly. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't conk, think so. The word conk is, is by no means cute, is it? No, I always I, I would have thought that means big nose. Yeah, it's a, she's got she's got a uh, big uh, Well, this is it, you see. A rough this, ass this face. Is and this is where you, is we get the debate violation. because I always think that the, one of his strong points is he paints extremely good pictures. He's a great storyteller, but he tells you the story and leaves enough out for you to draw your own conclusions and add your own little scenarios in which you've both done and you've both gone in different directions, basically around the same thing. But basically, but again, in different directions. Me, I've got him in a roadside diner because there's mention of a spatula. So I do want your eggs over easy or whatever. So he's sat there. He's a salesman. I, I'll get this picture as a salesman that's gone in there. It's honking it down with rain outside. And he sees this waitress. She's quite attractive. Uh, it's, what's he got to go back to? He's got nothing back in Jersey. Let's just stop here and see see what this what what, what, what happens here with this with this waitress. Yeah. I'd and then he starts having these that, yeah. these fantasies about her that she's she's used to the finer things. Um, she had a, a, a toy boy, or, not a toy boy, a sugar daddy, and things like this. Now these are all these fantasies that I think they're all these fantasies. Ed, he's building up this story about her that he's trying to justify why he should stop and just think, oh, well, I want to make it go with this waitress. But his delivery, yeah, I, 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 I think it's a great. I think he's a great storyteller, great great storyteller. He just paints such a wonderful picture. But he is marmite. But he is yes, Marmite, yeah. Because I, fa- I, fa- I found him growing on me the more I listened to it. He's when I first heard good. it all, I'm glad he did. What? No, I'm f- my first thing was this is because the that... story drew you in, yeah. didn't it? Yeah, and I thought this is something that Billy would be talking about, about well, a drunken <laughs> bloke upside down behind telly, 
Oh, he does. He does more drunken stories than that. <laughs> and I thought his voice and he yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and all that's going to come out in a minute. And oh. then once I got past that and I was listening to him, I thought, yeah. And you're like, oh, actually, yeah. It's I, definitely. I, I, I buy this. Interesting. You can't argue that. It's oh, he, he, not yeah. yeah. Is either is either not your cup of tea that you have to listen to him, or he's not your cup of tea that he draws you into him and you become listening to him. Yeah. Although it's, you still might not, you know, be his number one fan. You you find it easier to listen to him the more that you listen to him. Yeah, yeah. You're used, the, the stories, you're, you're used the stories to draw you in, but it's his yeah. delivery that's yeah. going to divide people. I think you have to get past that. First. It's the story. It's his de- delivery that's going to divide his, people. Yeah, getting used but to. But as I always is. like to say, it's a poor artist that just paints the picturesque. Hold for applause. Yes. And um, bow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, moving on uh, I've been dying to show on my tent <laughs> where so, did you learn that one from uh, it's one of me I've just recently heard it and I, I just think it's so good but thank you for that no um, I'd just like to mention another one that I've mentioned to you before hold on you're putting two in here now no I'm not I'm not oh, I'm just I'm, I'm just going oh, I'm oh, just oh, going oh, oh, I'm just, I'm just extending <laughs> on his, his point about delivery oh, and, yes, and storytelling so if you listen to Another track by his. He does surprise, play. Surprise. He does play. Like Louis pointed out, he does play characters. Each story, he plays a character vocally. And uh, in, in this particular one, he plays a drunk. Again, he's a yeah. washed-up lounge bar piano player. You know, nobody's listening to him, so he just has a whinge because he's drunk. And he's sat at piano and he's just playing away to himself. And you know, nobody's listening, so he just makes up these silly. A bit angst against everything that he sees, and it's the title of the song is "The Piano Has Been Drinking." I think you've played me this one before. I've played it for you before. The piano has been drinking. My necktie is asleep, and the combo went back to New York, and the jukebox has to take a leak. I mean, there's some great, there's some great lines in it, and it's all stupid stuff. But it's like, well, it don't matter. Nobody's listening. I mean, it's no Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Pizza Hut, but fine. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, Louis, what were yours? So, mine was... Mine's, mine's a different one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Something wrong, way. I had to laugh when you said well, this. Well, yeah, but I have I have good reason. So this has been my song of the past maybe month, actually. Really? Yeah. So, I'm not going to try and be cool. I, I, you know, I don't need to be cool. You don't. <laughs> You are Mr. Cool. There we go. You are, you are Mr. That, cool. Th- that I'm side a, of the bar is always the chilliest. I'm a walking incubator. <laughs> You're a walking violation to the blues. Coolness. Boom, boom. So, uh, mine is What a Fool Believes by the Doobie Brothers. Okay. Now, I think the Doobie well, Brothers... Well, you can wait, because we have to review it first. All right, go on then. We'd... I'll let you go first. Okay. On this um, crap. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been... It, I've always liked it. I've always liked the Doobie Brothers. They had long train running and stuff like that. I've always been a big fan of Malcolm McDonald. I think he's got one of the finest voices, never no more. Lovely, lovely voice. Yeah, really, really good. Um, 1978 of the Doobie Brothers album. This is the sound of Jeff reading. Yeah, I'm just breaking glass. (laughs) Thank you. 1978. Track two. Track two. two. Yeah. No, no, I've always liked it. I've, I've always, I've always admired his uh, his vocal. I think they're great. Difficult to beat. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I just had to lean forward in and pass away my glass because he's about to replenish my drink. Yeah. Came off. He came into the Doobie Brothers on this album because he'd been doing two or three albums with Steely Dan, and he was singing for them. Uh, and then he got uh, the lead singer. We, we uh, the Doobies was taken out, so he brought in as a keyboard player. Um, and I do. Does anybody know why they're called the Doobie Brothers? What Doobie Brothers are? I'm assuming that Doobie's got something to do with uh, marijuana. Come on, it's like Doobies. No, it's well, not. In no, the middle of the songs, they used to go Doobie, do no, Doobie, Doobie. No. It's a large family, and uh, the, the Doobie family. There's Monica Doobie, uh, Ruby Doobie, Francis Doobie. I've got a dog as well. That's Called where we get the cartoon from. Doobie Doobie. What? Uh, oh, Scooby Doobie. Sc- Scooby Doo. Are you kidding me? Are you winding me up? Yes. All right. <laughs> He was going with that. I went for it. Yeah, you got me. Oh, what and, I didn't think of that one. And scrappy. That was all. Done. Have you written that one down? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't write jokes. Though. Oh, good lord, that was good. <laughs> no, no, Excellent. no. It is to do with marijuana. Yeah. 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 Of yeah. course. 
Yeah. Tell me, tell me about what you think about the song. No, I think it's great. I think I'm going to give it uh, again. I probably give it a seven. Yeah, it's part of my youth. That really, mm. that and one or two others that they did around that time. But it, I think it's testimony to them and probably McDonald that it's lasted and it's still as popular today. It's not one of these hits that's faded away. Or, oh, I remember that way back in the day because it's still popular now. And what do you think? Right. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I am familiar with the track. There was. I found some information that I didn't realise about the track. You've done research? I have. And I have found this. First of all, I'll give you my impression of it. Every time I hear this, and I don't know why, but I always think of Saturday Night Fever. It's got an upbeat sort of funky... Yeah, yeah it's very, very 70s funky, John Travolta, white suit... Deal, you know, down the street, waving his arms about. We're really aware of the film. Um, it's also yeah. got a piano in it. And and it has. It well, has. Actually, well, it's, 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 it's a keyboard. keyboard. It's, it's a keyboard. not a piano, it's a keyboard. Someone's not been listening. Yeah. And I've actually I have actually wrote <laughs> I have actually wrote down here, Louis, keyboards, what the fuck? <laughs> well, wait, not keyboard, for me. A keyboard is a modern take on the piano. And did you know it's a cover? Is it? It is a cover. Yes. Oh, I did not know that. Um, oh, who did it originally then? No. Kenny Loggins did it. Wait, 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 wait. Kenny Loggins actually wrote it. Right, there, there, there we go. Well, actually, it, and was, it's a, it was, was written a... by Kenny Loggins and, and Mike McDonald. Yes, it did. And they and Kenny Loggins did it first. And, really? Yes. Really? And they, him? And oh, the, Kenny Loggins did it first, but the Doobie Brothers did it did second. He do it, did Kenny Loggins do it solo? Yes. Or did he do it with his partner at no. that time? Did it, did it as a solo? Well, Loggins, no. Loggins but and Messina but it, back it, in the it day. It says here on, on but Wikipedia. It, now, I know Wikipedia is not trusted, but it says written by the both of them. And yeah, it's, it's yeah. It's not one release date, though. Yeah, it was done. It was released first by Kenny Loggins. And when the Doobie Brothers re released it, I think about six, seven months after, oh, okay. it did better. Right. So it is classed as a cover because Loggins did it yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. Right. Although he did do it with, is it? I'd like to is know. It, is it Michael McDonald or Michael Ma- McDonald. Ma- or Malcolm McDonald? Michael, Michael, isn't it? Yeah, those two wrote it. Right. So obviously Kenny Loggins went on to do. Footloose. I'd like to know where he released it because I don't remember. Well, I'm, not that I'm a big Kenny Loggins no. fan, but I don't Age remember him yeah, being a solo less. artist. Well, it didn't do well. I don't think it made like the top. It was with Loggins and Messina, and then he went solo. And then he went solo, and that was it. Uh, and he did. And he, 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 this was one of the Foot tracks. and all that malarkey. Excuse me, yeah, that they they wrote this, them two wrote it, and he fetched it out first. Oh, right, okay, fair enough. Did not so know. it's actually classed as a cover. Well, that, is a, that, that. is a bonus point to you, though. Thank you, sir. And, um, but yeah, it's very 70s, very funky, very, um, I don't know, you wouldn't put it past something like Bee Gees doing it, Saturday Night Feverish type of thing. It's, oh, no, it's, not, it's not a bad track, it's, it's all right. I actually it's got it, that feel to it, is what I, I mean. I know what you're saying. I don't mean I actually, Bee Gees are going to do it, but I mean, it's got a feel of the Bee Gees era, Saturday Night fever type of thing. I, I know where you're coming from with that, but I actually give it a bit more uh, credit than that, because I think it's a what bit more... What are you saying, well, that Bee Gees aren't creditable? Oh! Here we go. Uh-oh. Here we go. Uh-oh. Strap yourself in. Here we go. Brace uh, yourself. <laughs> no. What, you don't think the Bee Gees are credible? Well, yeah, they really? are. They are. Oh. At, at what they do. At what oh. they do. And what they do is dum, not dum, what dum, I dum, dum. particularly gravitate towards. I think they are credible. Uh, well, you know, that's that's a point of view, and I, I accept that. But, I, I, I mean, all right, we'll get back to that. We'll, we'll, we'll we will. Remind me, I'm going to come back to that. Right. Uh, do I have to remind you? No, no. I Can remember. we remind you now? You don't forget to come back to I'm, Bee Gees. I'm going to tell you why I like the song. Absolutely, yes. All right? Okay. The song is is addictively happy. It's a great song. There's a great melody. The vocals are fantastic. Everything works on that song. The production values are clean, tight, and fresh. And it, it's, I don't know, 40 years old. And it, it's got that jaunty little do 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 there's no way that you can't walk without your rhythm. Being no, no, no. You tap. You're in. You're into it. You tap. Away. Yeah. yeah. Now the thing that I love about it is, and and there's a, a niche of songs like this, which really you don't notice at first, and it, it can take you years until you realise it. So the song's a happy song. It's like, duh, 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 duh. but the lyrics are sad. The lyrics are sad. It's a sad song with an up tempo yeah. major key. Yeah. And I find that fascinating. That 
you you don't notice it. You just you're just consumed by all the like, happy beats. Yeah, the yeah, great yeah. melody, the lovely singing, the great production. It's yeah. a good time summer song. Everyone's favorite disco party song. But it's not. But it's a sad, sad song. It's about a breakup and everything. Yeah. Like that. I was going to say it's that. always played at parties and yeah. disco. Oh, it's and about a breakup and, and it's birthday a, parties, and it's, anniversary yeah. parties. It's, they all it's play it, don't they? Category of uh, young nights run free. You know, young nights, young yeah. hearts run free. Sorry, that's a miserable song. It's a it's a depressing song and it's warning youth about not not falling in love. Keep running free. Do what you want. I, and I, I love it when you stumble across these songs which have such a dark undertone. And there's another one. There's a Barry White song um, <laughs> uh, called what is it now? Um, a bit of Barry White. It's, it starts with like, but there's an audio of him like trying to get into a club. He's like, one ticket, please. Nah, she's at home. She's at home. And it's it's a disco song. It's really up tempo. It's funky. It's party party. He's having a good time in the club. But then when you actually listen to the lyrics, the lyrics are about him going out at night dancing until the club shuts because he doesn't want to go home because he's so miserable at home yeah. but the song yeah. is party song but I can't see Barry White dancing to be honest okay well I imagine yeah. like a, a slow swagger but very sweaty very yeah. sweaty yeah. turning circle at QE2 yeah. I, I yeah. love I, I really I've got a lot of appreciation it's I, that, I think it's a, it's a niche market and it's 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 very hard to do it to turn a very up song and then have this this clear as day dark meaning but hidden in, in great melodies and yeah yeah and yeah i get what you're saying so it's in a... that case i love the complexity of the song because yeah. it, it's you can listen to it for 10 years and, and enjoy it and then suddenly one day you're like oh wait a minute this is a sad song yeah if you start to read the lyrics and you don't listen to the music uh, or you listen to the music without the lyrics you won't put the two together no and, and aside from that michael mcdonald's voice is amazing that yeah did you see the thing he did on lockdown the tiny desk Sorry? Tiny desk. No, not on Tiny Desk. Oh, it was a yeah, Tiny Desk. Tiny yeah, but desk, it was Tiny yeah. Desk from his own desk, weren't yeah, it? Yeah, it was a remote one because of COVID. If anybody's not familiar with Tiny Desk, I recommend that they have a look. It's a series of concerts where they've just basically got to stand behind a tiny desk in, in a public radio station in America. And you get all the top artists that will turn up and they'll... Uh, Adele? Yeah. Taylor Swift? No, I said top artists. And what they do is they play three Ooh. songs. It's very bitchy tonight, isn't it? <laughs> and they play Someone usually play three songs. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's really good. But you'll get all sorts of weird and wonderfuls on as well. It's not all your top artists. But everybody wants to have a go at it, don't they? Yeah, they've all done it. Yeah. Ooh. And but it's very interesting because it's stripped down, it's basic, it's like squeeze them into a corner and see what they can do. But it's basically that one. It's a bit, it's a bit like... all on his own with a keyboard. <laughs> Sorry? That one was Michael McDonald on his own in his house playing a keyboard and singing. Yeah, it was brilliant. Set of pipes to die for, and it, they've got a they've got a good catalogue of songs. Yeah. yeah. So let's mark out of ten. We're going to go. Um, well, what, what the last you... matador. Seven point five. Seven point five. Louis, last matador. Um, I'm going to go six. Ooh. And that's nothing wow. against the song. I just it, it's it's where I'm at. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm so gonna... like hence my choice for the Doobie Brothers. <laughs> yeah, you know well, what I mean. I'm going to give it at eight and three quarters. Eight and three quarters. No, no, that's 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 good because you just yeah. want to give it your own song ten, don't you? So yeah, why why not ten? There's no ten. There's no ten. There's no. Right, there's, why there's not no, nine? Because it could be longer. <laughs> yeah, because he drifted away from what he was. It it was like his last. What was the word I'm looking for? It's like a, an end of an era type of album, like we spoke about before. It changed direction at that yeah, point, didn't it? Thought I'll try something. It built up, and he, he, he could, but the trouble what well, we've it. often spoke about. But, but Are you I mean, that that was the end of that style of song. No, 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 no. no. What we mean, what, what I think. Well, I'm not going to preempt what you think. What I think you mean, Wayne, is. But for me, his early stuff up to that point was it was very good it was it was going along at a good pace unfortunately it was releasing an album every sort of eight ten months too much too much yeah. how does he uh, do that like, well and plus good? playing plus playing gigs 200 gigs a year plus make it being guest on probably four or five albums a year and don't plus, forget, he's got the Beth Hart one and he's got the black it just country come off the back of doing uh black country communion black country communion because um, uh, he's on that album, isn't he? Yeah. Glenn Hughes is on that album. How do you do so much and produce consistent albums year after year? Can it be 
I think, I think, I think in his, in his early days, I think, product, it? I think early days, I think Kevin Shirley helped. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's got to this point, you see, where he's continued the theme and it's just starting to wane a little bit. I do think he's pulling it back oh, right let's, now. Let's not bring his name into this. <laughs> I think he's, it's I just, think he is pulling it yeah, back Yeah, I now. think he is. I think that last release he's done, that, that EP, yeah. I think that's very good. The worst, the worst one he's done for me is Row T. A little disappointing, wasn't I it? I thought that was absolute, absolute crap. It was crap. You're judging that by his previous stuff, though. It's yes. not, it's not crap. No, it's not crap. By, by other people's For me, standards. I mean, I've, I mean. By his own standards, it's, it's yeah, poor. Yeah, for, for somebody of him to fetch an album out like Roll T is just piss poor. You'd expect that from somebody like me. <laughs> Not Bonamassa. If I fetched Roll T out, you'd say, well, I was If you fetched Roll T out, Alex, when, I Alex, would think it were amazing. Yes. Well, <laughs> I would, but people wouldn't. They'd look at it and think, well, the oh. fact that you got Kevin Shirley to come round to your studio. Well, he, he does. And, and, t- and twiddle your know. nose. We sit in the garden, right? We sit, <laughs> we sit in beer garden <laughs> talking about Bonamassa's crap album, Roll T. And that's all because he's one. No, and I, and and it's not one of know, his best. It's not, no, not for his standards. Because I, as you well know, I class Bonamassa as probably this is be controversy as probably the best guitarist ever to walk this earth. Oh, but yeah. no, Bonamassa wipes anybody in for me. Okay, but on that then, what's what's Bonamassa's signature style? Blues it, rock, right, but. Oh, sorry. Wait, 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 wait. So, but what, my, what I'm getting at is, is isn't Bonamassi just very good at imitating other blues players? Like, he's a very good player, and he's a master of, of impersonation. But don't you think... Wait, he's a master of impersonation. Not that that's As easy. In who? But he says the hardest one that to yes. do is, is Jimmy Page. But, like, yeah. can somebody imitate Joe Bonamassi, or are they just imitating him imitating somebody? Oh, that's a good question. I don't you know really know. Like, yes. Has he got his sound, or is he just I th- very yes. good? No, I think he has. I think he has got his sound, and he has got his. his it took style. him a while to find it, though. Didn't yes, it? it did. Yeah, uh, I th- but I think he's, he's. I think he's there now. I think he's there now. I think he. I think he got it. Yeah. Around this period. I this, think. Yeah. I think. 2010, 2011. It, he's it was worked, too busy up to that point. He's worked being a everybody lot. else. He's worked a lot on his stuff. He's worked a lot on his voice. When we went to see him, yeah. he wasn't a singer. Well, he was, so but he sings speak. a lot better now. But over the last probably what, f- what she had, over the last <laughs> five, ten years, yeah. his voice has come on leaps and bounds and he's coach. quite a decent singer now I think his vocal coach has just died hasn't he oh I don't know I don't yeah I think know. so he yeah. must have really hit a good note <laughs> <laughs> oh boom boom <laughs> or a flat note <laughs> right? but no uh, for me I, I don't think there's a guitarist like him he's, and, and I think he once described himself as a jukebox of guitars there we go I, I, think, yeah. I think the actual quote was is the pod the guitar pod of guitarists or something like that. Yeah. You know, the pod that can emulate different sound effects? Yeah. He described himself as being that. Uh, you know, that kidney-shaped pod that came out? Yeah. That would it. Yeah. He, he described I, himself as being that. I don't that. think there's a, there's a genre that he can't do. He's very geeky, though, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Oh, he's... He's not exactly a rock and roll, is he? He, he lives and dies guitars. That is it. That's all. He, guitars from going to get up in the morning... To go to bed at night. Well, yeah. I, I believe the phrase is lives and breathes, but okay. Yeah. And um, I've changed. Lives and dies. <laughs> lives and dies by the guitar. <laughs> yes, and he likes his amps, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Anything guitar. And Nerdville. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, you didn't name, it, name it Nerdville for nothing, no, did he? No. And he's just moved, by the way, into a new Nerdville. What's yeah. the story about Joe Bonamassi uh, when he, his agent made him wear suits? No, that would be B. Was it BB? B B B well, said. Because he just used to like being like hoodies and Well he used to come out in jeans and t shirts and things and B B said to him sorry? and B B said to him, If you are, are going to be a blues player, you better start respecting the blues and the next time you'll come out I expect to see you in a suit and dressed for the occasion. Oh, right. And he from then on he wears now wears suits. I mean it's a big a big part of the image, isn't it? Yes. You, you, yeah. you can't Swagger up there, looking like yeah. a bag of crap. Well, no. well, he did open for BB when he was twelve. Yeah, not by the BB actually cancelled his concert 
so Bonamassa could open for him because he should have been playing somewhere in America on the Friday. But Bonamassa were but Bonamassa were at school, right. so he said, "Well, I can't." His mum and dad won't let him go, so he said, "Well, I tell you what, then, give me two minutes." And he phoned up the venue and said, "I can't make it Friday." Bracken make it on Saturday and he cancelled the concert so Bonamassa could open for him at 12 year old he's a good egg isn't he old BB well he was, was, was yeah. he was yeah and then he'd be, he, he was very big friends with him and he told him that he had to smarten his appearance up and uh, start to respect well somebody's got to have not they and uh, he did and now he, he's, he he wears very I've seen him in some very strange suits a bright orange one is my favourite one <laughs> that he wore bright in. orange like a zoot uh, was it a zoot he, suit or something like he come yeah he come out like a big tangerine in uh, in Leeds at Glass House yeah yeah he wore a big uh, bright orange looked like a road worker <laughs> really Ivy's funny. Ivy's suit. Yeah, just like a big well, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that's safety first with the blues. Yes. So I'm going to give you eight and three quarters anyway oh. on on that one. So um, I, t- I tell you what I like. Just uh, just, to, just to go back slightly, I, I like the fact that he's controlling his business venture with his partner. And it, was yes. it J and R? J and R Adventures or something yes. to call it. Yeah. It's his own record label. It distributes everything. And produces everything under his own their That's own the name. That's the way you have to do it these days. That yeah, is yeah. the um, yeah. They're in complete control of everything that they do, the marketing and everything. Yeah. Uh, and their plan what was I it was it a 10 year plan a 10 year plan yeah was, I think that's which has gone he, on for 20 years yeah, and I think that's why he does albums every year because he, he, he well you could understand he that if he intended on, he relies to, on if, those albums if he intended to retire he's not, he's earlier, not but he played. don't he, he'll never retire no well they don't do they well no I mean look at BB he, he, it's, it's exactly the same mould he'll, he'll not retire because he, that, he can't retire no He's not just going to be a guitar salesman. It wouldn't surprise me if BB won't play guitar morning before he died. He, Probably were. That's what they do. That's what they do. But he controls, him and his partner control everything that they do. Yes, they do, yeah. They've got complete ownership of it all. Yeah. So anyway, so going back, so we'll go down to uh, Tom Waits, Invitation for the Blues, out of 10. Louis? Um, I would say, I'm going to go, I'm going to go five. A five? Now, okay. Now, there's nothing you don't wrong have with to explain it. No, I do need to explain it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the song. The song's fantastic. However, however, again, the place I'm at, it's one of those songs that it, it would be once in a once in five years I'd yeah. play it. Yeah. It's a very very good piece of work. It's it's like you know it's like some Pink Pink Floyd songs. You have to be in the mood to be there. Yeah. And I'm you can't you. force that feeling. Yeah. Like and when you need that feeling, it's there and it's a great song. It's but, a great it's a great song to pull out your trick bag into. And yeah. Say, oh, have you listened to this? Just if you think you know that Tom Waits, listen to this one. Yeah. Like so you can put Tom Waits on and people can be like, Oh, I'm not in the mood for this or yeah. if they are in the mood for it, it's like, Oh yes, it's great. Yeah. But you can put the Doobie Brothers on that particular song and that can be like that, cheer can get, you up. that you can cheer you up. That yeah. can change yeah. the yeah. colour yeah. of the room. Yeah. In a, in a positive way. More of an upbeat. Yeah. More of a... So, yeah, I like yeah. that. I'll yeah. Until you start singing the lyrics. Yes. <laughs> Until you realise <laughs> but, but that. You si- but you sing them in a happy... Oh, yeah. In a, in a happy voice. Well, I'm going to give it a six. Yeah. And, and and the reason why I'm going to give it a six is when I first started listening, the first time was many years ago when he first played it, me. I would have probably given it a th- three. Yeah. On a good On a good day. Yeah. But I'm going to give it a six, just purely and simply because... <laughs> Once I stopped criticising it in my head and I actually said, right, just just stop it and listen to it, I find myself being dragged into it. And like I said, in, and it got me thinking of people like James Cagney mm-hmm. and, 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 and stuff like that and Humphrey Bogart. And that's the images that I got in my head, all these old, famous, in black that, and white it paints type, a, yeah, a big picture, characters. And in for that, that... As far as he can say, he, he would turn around and say, job done. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, he's gone from somebody that we're gonna. Be, what the hell's this bag of yeah. shit? Yeah. To, there to, are other to, swear words available, by the way. Yes, like, <laughs> like uh, no, um, feces, and also you know, so you know, so for that pulling me round, I'm going to give it a six. Good. Well, I'm glad. I'm really glad that you've gone that you've you've gone that way. You've given it a chance. Hmm. You, you've you've put your own thoughts into what's going on behind it and. Yeah, he would say job done. Yeah. And what you what 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 would you give it? Would I give it? I, I would go seven on it. Yeah. Strong seven. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Very good. Right, Doobie Brothers. 
The okay. copy. You're gonna be. Co- this is gonna be controversial. I'm gonna get a nine point eight then. Yeah, that'll do. Because cool. I can't find a way to improve the song, and I know I know what genre it is. I know exactly what I'm getting, and it, and it, it, you. it does exactly what I want it to do. Like I think the production on it is fantastic. Like like I stated earlier, like I I don't think that you can. I I I think if you play that in the room with somebody who's bummed out, hmm. they'll tap the toe. They will. It, it'll do exactly what you want it to do. Yeah. Uh, I, and I don't foresee a way of that not fitting in twenty one's room yeah. because well, you don't yeah. necessarily you don't have to listen to the lyrics. The production it is so good. The singing it is so good. There's some strong melodies, some strong rhythm hooks. Yeah, it's instant. So it doesn't fade in. It's not got like a a build up solo. It's mm. it's boom, you're in. But it's got a piano, keyboard. We've been through this, Dad. Come on. <laughs> yeah, when I were refresh, refreshing myself with it yesterday, I I, I was doing the old leg tapping job. Here. And I'm like, mm-hmm. instantly changes the color of the room. Yeah. If you're yeah. into that. Yeah, it did. I, I, I had to redecorate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why? Why? I'm not never playing that. Why song is again. my why am I underwear brown? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> well, you didn't think that, did you? So you're gonna give it a, a I'm gonna give it a high number because I, I can't think of a way if you want to give it a ten, if you think that's no, perfect, no, it's, then well, you'll go with I, ten. I, currently I think it's yeah. it's a perfect pop song. I mean then that's it. Or or whatever genre it is. I mean some people would argue. Well, it's what cheesy. would you put it in? See, uh, this is I, I don't know why you laughed initially oh. when I put this up there because yeah. You didn't expect it. No. No. No, I didn't. Because that's no. not necessarily my thing. But no. I can appreciate its production values and the complexity of it with it being a sad song, but heavily dressed in a good time. If 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 your dad would have said to me, right, we'll have a bet on, on Louis Pig. You can never bet on his because he goes from all over the place. But on your, I would have put my money on. I'd have probably gone each way on Zeppelin or Stones. If you had a third one, which would it be? Because I, I had a second, I had one that was almost going to get posted. If I had a third bet... Which artist would it be? Maybe early Kings of Leon. Very no, early Kings well, of Leon. I see what he did there. Not a effort there, though. No, it was a good effort. But the, the one that I would have played, there's been a recent documentary film out about um, David Bowie. It's called Moon Age Daydream. And the director of it was fantastic. And he did a really good song, uh, a really good job of it. And if, if anyone's interested they should check it out because it's about two and a half hours of like unseen footage and it's it's a musical montage and all these it's a musical monster it's, it's reimagined it's it's just absolutely fantastic but anyway there's a song um that's with the documentary because some of these songs have been reimagined and like remixed and there's a song there called memory of a free festival and it's not the mm. folk version that we're aware of mm. um and it, it almost should be called Memory of a Free Festival uh, Bracket Sun Machine. And the only line that David Bowie sings is, is Sun Machine is coming up and we're going to have a party. Uh-huh. And then it's like, it becomes this like big crowd thing, crowd comp- uh, participation. It feels very anthemic. And, but in the background, it sounds like the Industrial Revolution's waking up. There's all these groans and squeals and all sorts, like a big things rising out of the ground. I just think it's wonderful. It's not a complicated song. It's just, it's like the day's waking up and it's crawling out of the ground. And sorry, the, the sun machine's going down or something like that. But anyway, it's just a wonder, wonder, wonderful, wonderful song. But anyway, I went for Doobie Brothers. Very good. And, and your marks for Doobie? I'll, I'll give it a good, a strong seven. Yeah, I'm going to go with a seven on that one. Yeah. I think it's worth a seven. Cool. Just because. What he says, it, it's a very although it's funky. It does what it says on the tin, and if you do read the lyrics, yeah. you it, it's it's quite an eye opener that one. It's a good point that Louis pointed out right at the beginning that the music doesn't really reflect the vocal content, the, the lyrical no. content. No. So if you read it, then you think, oh, you take a whole different light on it, don't you? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. It's. Uh, the, I mean, the first line is, "He came from somewhere back in a long ago," so you. are if you think about that before you start listening to it, you know that there's something bad going to happen to it. <laughs> yeah, know? on paper, it's a sad song, but uh, audibly, it's lovely. Yeah, very good, yeah. There that we was, go. That's, that a, that's the song that was of a, the week. Yes. Yeah, well, yes, that, I think very good. I quite enjoyed that, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, well, good. Yeah. If you yeah, enjoyed it, leave it. a comment below. Well, yeah. the thing is, our, our there were quite a few surprises. I, I didn't. I didn't see that one. I didn't see the Doobie Brothers coming from Louis. No, I, I didn't. didn't necessarily think it would be as obvious as David Bowie or the, or the Stones, but I didn't know where it was going to come from. But I knew it would be interesting. No, I wouldn't have gone for that either. I would have. I would have won my bet with you. With Joe. 
with Joe. I know you would have gone for Joe Bonamassa. Yes, he's always a, a go to of mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he, he, he's, your, he's your go to, isn't he? Mm, he is, yeah. He's always for a lot of things. Yeah. He's your go to. So I, I know you'd like to do. I mean, when we get further out line with this and we start. We might get him in. You never know. <laughs> we might come down. Not now, Joe. Can you just wait outside? Yeah, just just stand like, out. No, 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 no. That's it. Put your trousers back on. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll you you you'll stray from that theme. I know you. Next time round, you will do that. But you wanted to open this little bit of a yeah. segment that we have with a, a strong Bonamassa theme. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Right. So my question is. Oops. Hold on. Sorry. My question is, what is the most to you anyway? the most overrated artist and why and Ooh. the underrated artist and why overrated i even got to think about that iron maiden iron maiden and why because they're absolute shy i'm gonna need more information they than that are the not the not the, have you ever the, tried running to the hills you know how hard that is i have i have on many occasions you can't get past the bungalow now, I can't, it, no. are you basing this on i am basing dickinson. this on dickinson per, yes on dickinson is not even karaoke <laughs> he isn't karaoke. He he, he can't it's hold just, a note. Yeah, but he you, sings you don't out like Dickinson, key. do you? No, he but sings out a it, key. It's not the band, though, is he? He's no, not the band. No, the, but he is. He's is the main from. It wasn't always. He did leave. Well, he did and, and came I'm, back, and, and and rightly so. He should have <laughs> kept left. What about Steve Harris on bass? He's the man. He's been there forever. I, yeah, but as a band without the lead singer. Yeah, get get somebody in that can sing. They can first. fly a plane. Well, then that's what he ought to do. But he ought to leave the singing part in the plane. Should sing he to have himself. Left it to Paul Diano. He should have left it to anybody. <laughs> I'm sure that the that the runner up in that pub in that pub karaoke competition would be way better than him. I would have liked to have seen Des O'Connor saying that. <laughs> that would have done it for me. Absolutely. Yeah. He is my all time probably what you're trying to say if there's any singer you dislike more you don't know of him it's it, it, it's, it's, it's him he's it's not even he's not even karaoke he don't uh, even get up there hey he can fence he, he can fence apparently he's a very good fencer yes hey he can fly a plane he can so why don't he shouldn't, hey. that, be, shouldn't that be B he can he, fly a plane he can write a book C. <laughs> He can write a book. But then why doesn't he do that and leave I Maiden to do what they want to do? And okay. that's go and entertain people. So what is your most what's your most underrated artist then? The most underrated artist. I find this one difficult. Yeah. That is it. A... Is. Should we come back to you on that one? Yeah. yeah. Give me a that? minute to have a think about right. that. What's Dad, Father, Jeff. <laughs> uh, what's your that. most overrated artist? Overrated artist. Uh mine is Morrissey. All right. Um yeah, I don't. I'm sorry. A lot of people do get him. I don't. Do you consider this as part? Are you are you like umbrelling this umbrella umbrella ring this with the Smiths? No, just Morrissey as a solo. So artist. did you like the Smiths? Then? Uh, I'm not going to say I was a big fan of the Smiths. No, I, I, like I, I, I accept that they played a, a good part in the development of that period of music, but there wasn't necessarily my cup of tea. I like uh, the Smiths, but. Morris is Morris is a whole. Yeah, I, I just don't I, get what people see in him. I'm weird on that one. I do mm-hmm. not understand it. Yeah, on he, both, I don't even get the Smiths. He, he says a lot of things to create drama, uh, and especially in interviews. And I, it, I think he purposely goes out of, of his way to be outspoken. If you have to do and, that, uh, yeah, and I, I just think then you're generic, lacking in something. I just think he's a bit of an asshole as well. Yeah, you're lacking in in your own. Self worth, your own belief in what you do. If you have to create controversy or to look at me, I'll be extreme. So look at me. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. If you if your music stands and falls on your music, you should be like the the lowest, least most important thing there. But it's always been like that, though. It's always so been it, like it that. It shouldn't really be a surprise. He wore an ear and aid and didn't need it for God's sake. Really? No, I didn't need that ear and aid. How do you know? It was a stage prop. How do you know? It was even bloody got a bad. Are you sure it wasn't like a like a, a sound no, thing? No, because he was he was all he, he was listening to a lot of the fifties stuff and there uh, was a particular singer around that time I can't remember his name now and he he, he had his air quiffed up and he got this air, air monitor in it. Oh please, well, let me throw some 
flowers into the audience. What were they? Gladiolis or something? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Wasn't that the um, the Australian drag artist thing? No, it might have been. But he used to do <laughs> the same thing. Dear men and every, didn't she throw the gladioli <laughs> things into He used these? to do the same thing. And uh, I just uh, thought it were all... The thing is, in the Smiths is like, visual, is and very... and his sex oil, but uh, and his sex uh, Dame Edna when he wasn't Dame Edna. Why are we on about Dame Edna? He was. Didn't he get dressed up as Tom Waits? No, the drunk. I mean, no, no, so he, he played a drunk character. <laughs> but, but anyway, yeah. uh, I think Morrissey is a complicated character, and I don't think he's is well liked, and I think he's he is is drunk on his own uh, fame and ego. But yeah. I do think that the Smiths were very interesting Important. and i think the lyrics were very <clears throat> unique and they, they say a lot and they are quite like they're cultural culturally relevant to the time Import, yeah like for yeah. especially from a northern a northern town like a northern band to, to be so flowery well uh, yeah see this is where i have another problem because and this goes back to that period like i've said on previous podcasts that i like bands that push certain in directions where the music probably needs to go or they want it to go just to shake things up and i think at that particular time we had the old manchester thing and it there was just one of them okay so what about underrated do you have one or do you want a minute to think oh well no no the underrated one is for events uh, i thought you were gonna go there do you mm-hmm. yeah I, I, he is within a particular circle Quite highly rated, but on a on a on a uh, a larger, I don't know, a broader outlook, not enough people for me know about Foy Vance. Is I'm not sure if he even wants it that way. Sorry, I'm not sure if he wants to be that now. Well, he should be, as far as I'm concerned. He should he should be. He can do whatever he likes to do, whether it be a lot or a little. But I want him to get the recognition that he deserves. For those of the people out there that don't know anything about Foy Vance, would Check you, him out. would you like to enlighten them on a bit of knowledge about him? Go out and buy the album, Hope. Great album. Very good. Brilliant yeah. album. Yeah, he's Brilliant. from start to finish. But don't you think the it's people that It's one of the few know... albums yeah. you could go from start to finish. Yeah, but don't you think that the people that know of Foy Vance put him very highly regarded? Yeah, yeah. 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 once you've discovered him, yeah. you realise the talent that's there. Yeah. It, it, I just want. Well, we went to watch I, him. Didn't we? we did. Again, I, I just like to see. Was that plug again? It was again. I think no, it's it was. My, uh, no, it wasn't. Lead milk. It was lead milk. We saw. Um, what did we see at plug? I think he's my most viewed artist that I've seen. I've seen him at Ian, Se- Ian Segal. We saw him. And also, so I've, I've seen him everywhere. Um, I, I, so, for those that you don't know, Foy Vance is signed under Ed Sheeran's. I think it's a Ginger Records. Ginger, like that, or yeah, Ginger, yeah, Ginger, like Ginger, yeah. uh, he's good friends with, with Ed Sheeran. So Ed Sheeran before he was famous, was a massive fan of, of Foy Vance. And, and Foy Vance at the time was doing the the circuit, the club circuit. And he was doing something which is, is quite common now. And Ed Sheeran has pretty much made it his own. But he was using a loop station, a loop pedal, where he would loop his vocals up and he would loop his guitar up and he'd create his big, wonderful sounds. And it was amazing to watch on stage. And it would just be one guy on stage. And it was like, this is phenomenal. And it all stemmed from, from Foy Vance. And Ed Sheeran would just follow him around. He's he super fan him, essentially. Uh, and then when Ed Sheeran obviously became very big, he uh, he signed to his record because they're good friends. Uh, where about it, where is uh, Five Bands from? He's from Ireland. He's from Ireland. Yeah. Whereabouts? Can't really. Is it? Uh, I don't know exactly where. He spent a lot of his time and he a lot of his youth in America mm-hmm. up until his early teens, I think. His dad was a, a his a father pastor? was a, a pastor or something like that, and a touring pastor at that. So he picked all the, up all these American soul songbook type stuff, and he, uh, he incorporates a lot of that in his songwriting. Very good at telling the story. A, a very very good voice. Unbelievably strong voice. But you've seen him play in in the, in the smallest of places, but he I, has played in the largest of places. Hasn't he? I've seen him play in a barber shop. A barber shop in he Sheffield. Did, he he, did, he wanted concert. to do a tour of little places, didn't he? Yeah, um, he was touring the UK in a Volkswagen camper van with his daughter. With his daughter, um, up and down the country, and it was a free uh, these free gigs, and he just wanted to find the quirky little places. And in this particular gig, it was a like a, a very vintage barbershop where you could um, have your, your hipster haircuts and stuff like that and your, your beard trimmed. 
and on, on the roof on the ceiling there was a a budgie in a cage and yeah <laughs> it was it was really cool it was very cool but um and then i've seen him play at a uh, latitude festival uh on the year i think it's 2016 when, when prince died and he did an amazing cover of purple rain yeah. just on the piano yeah yeah it, it's we saw him at the Brudenell club in leeds Brudenell and ledno yeah we got a photo with him outside yes we never actually got the we, we, I don't know what happened to the photo. I don't know. I, I know he said to me, how big fella are you? <laughs> Banger and County Down. That's it, Banger. Banger and County Down. Is that where Down. it comes from? Yeah. Yes. Nice. And oh. the record label is the uh, Ginger Bread Man. Ginger Bread Man, yeah. It's Ed Sheeran's record label, yeah. Right. Ed Sheeran. Yeah. So, uh, so Foy Vance is your underrated artist. He is. I highly recommend that people out there just check out what his back catalogue. Go and buy the album Hope. You will not be disappointed, unless you're a Iron Maiden fan. <laughs> yes, and then you will be bitterly disappointed. Yeah, so, so I'm I'm going to go with my underrated one, and, okay. and and it's a band now that's actually split up. Okay, and I always thought that the Temperance Movement. It's a good shout, that yeah should have been yeah, way shout, way way better than the the accolade that they actually well, achieved, they were, but they didn't get. In America, they were massive. Well, not I'm going to say no, massive. In no. America, they were bigger because didn't, they went and support act at Rolling Stones. And, Mick, did, and did. Mick Jagger described them as the best English rock band to come out of England in the last 30 years that he'd heard. Yeah? Yeah, and that's what Jagger... That that's was a tall Jagger. statement, though. That's yeah, it. and that's what Jagger said. They are the best English rock band out of England in the last 30 years. Well, if they're years. an English rock band, they would be. Yeah, we're going to say. Well, that's I, what, I that's... didn't want to be that guy, but you, <laughs> but, you went well, there before me. Yeah, I, yeah. I believe, I I am believe just, Jagger. I am just saying <laughs> Jack, what bitch. Jagger says. But, well, yeah, he's, he's, what he he's not that smart, is he? No, well, well, well he's, he's not that bad. He's not that too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Think on, yes, Jagger. Apparently, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with the Temperance Movement. Cool. Oh, we yeah. again, we have seen. Have they split up then? Yeah. Phil Campbell's. Well, Phil Campbell's left, but that's a band split up. Well, I think so. The there was going to get some other people in to sing, but I don't think it ever worked out. <laughs> it's a shame. And that, Phil Campbell the... went and did the uh, Scottish and the Something Brothers because he, he wanted more rock and roll, and he was the only one that did the drinking and going out and this and other. And, and apparently, the Temperance Movement people was very um, gig bed gig bed. Yeah. It was very straight, well, concentrated. We on saw them at Sheffield, didn't we? Yeah, they were brilliant. And we were outside at that, at that particular time. We smoked, and so we were out yeah. by having a, having a quick ciggy. Yeah, and uh, Blink, he came out and uh, joined us for the smoke. Yeah, yeah, his smoke was slightly different to ours. It was slightly different. It smelled different anyway. Let's just yeah. say that he offered us like herbal essences. He did. He did um, offer us a herbal uh, cigarette. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I think he got from um, someone like Holland and Barrett, I'm going to oh, guess. Okay. You know. Very <laughs> middle class. <laughs> he did offer us a herbal cigarette, but we declined. Yes, we did, we did. We'd had enough. But And, and we did have a, a short conversation with him. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to go As memory serves, I says, how, how the hell do you keep your voice going? Because he had a oh, very yes, powerful it, way of delivering it. And he it says, did, yeah. you've got to, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah, wise words. Wise words. Not his own though. The Bronson bro, the bon Bronson brothers. Is that where he, yeah. where he joined? And because there was more rock and roll and up for it, and they, saw, they did one album and then he left. When you say that, were he after the rock and roll party time? Yes, I think he was. Oh, rock and roll. And then he decided. Lifestyle. I think that's what yeah. he wanted. And then he decided, yeah, perhaps this is not actually for me. I'm sick of being drunk and drugged and all. I'm just going to pack up full stop. So he packed them up. He'll and, be back. And apparently now he threw, I think it was something to do with mental illness as well. Oh, right. He packed I've up. I've not heard of that band. <laughs> yeah, I think they had two tracks and then they went the yeah, way. They, and down, and then they? they went the way the casual vomit. All oh, right. Um, and yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll go with them. All right. Uh, well, I'll I'll tell you mine then. So, so yeah, mine would be my most uh, overrated artist. I think is Blink One Eight Two. So Blink One Eight Two at the moment they've uh, they've reformed, right? And they are selling their their tickets, their general admission tickets for an excess of three hundred pounds. Sorry, three hundred quid, three hundred pounds over no. three hundred dollars. Really? To see them. 
No. Now, they had a, they were a flash in the pan in the early noughties, and they did pop punk songs with very basic lyrics that, that just entered. It was they were just pop songs, pop songs. I, uh, I, enough, I, enough time has passed, and 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 people are like, oh, I like Blink One Eight Two. They're not that good. I've seen are you, are you more before. offended at the fact that they're trying to be so extortionate with the ticket? No, I, I've never liked. I've never been that overwhelmed with them. I saw them once at Leeds Festival. They weren't even the headline act, and they were they were rubbish. Um, in American, that's garbage. 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 The baba. Ba- uh, they weren't entertaining. They 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 ticked every cliche box in you the book. Sound like Mr. Coverdale. They had the spiky belt, the checkered shoes. They ticked all the cliche boxes. Now. The only reason I can think of that they are in any way relevant or current is because Travis Scott, the drummer, is going out with the Kardashian. And I think that's it. And I think they're just cashing in because they're... Is this, the, is this the same kid who's pretty much head to toe covered in tattoos? 300? Yeah, it is, but that's, that's got nothing... I, I don't mind that. Yeah. He can do what he wants with that. I, I just... I'm just trying to that's, identify yeah, that, who you're guy. talking about. So he's, he's currently going out with one of the Kardashians. I don't know Yeah, he's got like a checker flag on his name. It's it's got many things, but I I just think the he's going out with Kardashian. I just think they're so basic as a band, and I, I the, what, high, the father. I think they're basic as a band, and I I, I don't understand the appeal of it at, at all. But here we go, my most underrated artist is Blink One Eight Two. Is Blink One Eighty Two? No, my most underrated artist is Little Richard. Curveball there. No, no, let hear me out here. He's not underrated. Well, I think he is. Really? Yeah, yeah. So, Would you say he's underrated? No. No, I wouldn't. No. All right. He was massive. <laughs> no, he was quite small. He had one leg shorter than the other. Really? Is that why he had to sit down to play piano? So hear me no. out, right? All right, okay. Go on. Give us your reason why. Right. So I feel that Little Richard doesn't get enough respect or credibility than he ought to. So Elvis gets... A lot of titles for the king of rock and roll as the inventor of rock and roll he took the blues and he made it danceable right and he gets this yeah, right is this white guy that came along and took yeah. the, the blues music and made it like something you could swing your legs to mm-hmm. little richard was doing that way before elvis yeah, little richard was ignored for years but you can't see little richard, sat down little richard all he got is is, is praise by him turning up on chat shows and, and saying i am the fa- i am the father of rock and roll and he was doing it way before Elvis. I mean, oh, anyway, Little Richard was an oddball. He was a few picnics short of a buffet, <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, it was it was balls out it entertaining. It, it was fantastic. It great. The the way he, I mean, who has the confidence to perform the way he was performing? Yeah, it was, I mean, clearly yeah. he was as camp as a raw pink tent, but <laughs> in the fifties and sixties. Given everything what was happening in America, how on earth have you got the plums to do that? Yeah. <laughs> With one leg shorter than another, <laughs> singing Tutti Frutti. I mean, yeah. that that is rock and roll. Yeah. And, and, he, and he, he was overlooked for nearly 20, 30 years. <laughs> Wayne's still laughing. <laughs> what is he laughing about? Because he yeah, a camper than a raw pink tans. That's what really got Wayne. <laughs> You've never heard that before? <laughs> no. <laughs> But and I feel that he needs more credibility in well, the historical line. I'm a bit line. surprised by that because every every um, established artist they always refer to with Richard. They always every come back to every Richard. established artist, but the general the general consumption is Elvis. Well, or the reason they're not established because they don't. Or they don't Jerry Lee Lewis. I don't know. Well. well the scene I we, we go back asshole. a little bit further because you say that he he started well it was Rocket eighty eight apparently Billy Ailey no him? no Rocket <laughs> eighty eight apparently was the first rock and roll record yeah really yeah apparently so it's it's widely accepted that Rocket eighty eight was the first rock and roll record which was actually done by NASA. in conjunction with a, a, a chap called Jackie Branston and Ike Turner right. Well, Ike Turner, obviously, famous for being... Tina well, Turner's other husband. things, yeah, other yeah. things, yeah. yeah. So that came, that came later on his career. Allegedly. But the, allegedly. Well, allegedly. he did serve time for it, so it weren't alleged. The, like, <laughs> it, there's, there's all these little micro things that, that but, Little uh, Richard had influence on. So, like, if you look at the Beatles and Paul McCartney's, that was I, I get, all Little Richard. I get your point where 
they, 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 he deserves to have the recognition. He deserves to have think, more recognition. I think he's got a substantial amount of... Yes. Yeah, he does. I, I'm points. aware that he does, yeah. but I feel like he needs more recognition. So, you, so you think he, he should yeah. be as far up the pedestal as Elvis? Yeah. You do. I do. I think it should be more artistically recognised, like Elvis. I think if he was white, he would be more artistically recognised. We don't, we don't want to get into that ground. No, well, no. I, I'm just saying that something is true. Yeah. You, no. Well, it, it's mm. true. It's I should be that does things like that. It's an unfortunate about, thing. About. I, it's, it's, a, it's definitely an unfortunate thing. Things like that. I'm not saying and, anything and that, that's not new here. Oh no, 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 no. But that's what I'm saying. I, I just feel like he should have had, especially in the first half of his lifespan, more but acknowledgement. Was, as f- f- from what I know of, he was massive in America. He was massive over here. Yeah, but not as big as he should have been. Not as big as he should have been. That's the that's the point. I, that's what that's the reason why I picked him because it is controversial. You were like Little Richard. Everyone knows Little Richard. Yeah, but he should have been bigger because he did. It took him. He didn't release enough. He though, fought did he? a lot. Was, yeah, he fought a lot for his own attention. It didn't. It didn't release enough compared to other artists around that time. You look at people like James Brown that came along a little bit later on, admittedly in a different genre. But look at Elvis. But he was releasing stuff all the time. Elvis was releasing yeah. something every two weeks. wasn't necessarily good though, would it? But he was releasing it. And as long as it got the women screaming, they bought it. And that's what gets you up them tables. Well, it does. But you've got to you've got to back it up. It, don't, it didn't last that long, though, did it? It started well, in the late... Well, it died. Well, no, yeah, but it started in the late said, 50s. I, and it, it's wrong to say he invented what, rock and roll. What did he die? 78, 77, 77 something like that. Something like that. 77. So, so he had a good, what, 25 year ish And he didn't write... Oh, the, like, Maybe this, didn't write a lot of his songs. Why is that not discussed? The best story about well, Elvis didn't write a lot of his songs. But a lot of people no. don't. Know. Well, that was the contract that Colonel Tom Parker used to get with his songwriters. There's a good film about him at the moment where Baz Luhrmann, the the, the director of um, it's called Elvis Presley. Yeah, it, it's the director of uh, Romeo and Juliet. Remember that one in 1989? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very I mean, much of that ilk. Right. Like, you mean the new one and, that's and just music. come out? Yeah, yeah. We well, were on about this other week. Yeah, we? I've heard a lot of. I've had, I've got people. I, mean, saying, I have some negative comments brilliant, about it. Absolutely brilliant. You need a box of tissues, and then other people's like, "What an absolute load well, of Well, we were on about is. this, weren't we? Because Shite. We, it's, we it's were, good, but it's also rubbish. We wanted to know. I've not watched it. No. We wanted. To, I, I wanted to see uh, how he played Colonel Tom Parker. Tom Apparently, Hanks. Tom Hanks. I mean, first of all, I know it's good off music, but first of all, it's Tom Hanks. Yeah. So it's going to be good. Tom Hanks doesn't generally make a bad film. No, no. it's going to be good. It's Tom Hanks. He's up there with... with, with and that's the end of this episode. Of Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>